Okay, so now I'm just going to show you the setup for, for doing an ultrasound guided biopsy. Again, um, tell your patient what you're going to do, get your informed consent um, beforehand. What I usually do is I will start by laying out the tray. I use exactly the same tray. I use the dressing tray. That's the one that's readily available. One can get um, ultrasound covers for your ultrasound probe um, to keep it sterile and to keep the blood and stuff off these little grooves in the, in the, on the ultrasound probe that you don't want to get blood in there. So I, I, I would say that one should use the, some kind of, of cover for your, for your ultrasound machine to, to, to make it safer for your patients. Um, but I use exactly the same setup because that's what I've got available. And what I use, which is easily available, is for my ultrasound probe, I just use the red bag that comes with the dressing tray. So basically, I'm just going to show you how I do that. So I just put a little bit of, of jelly on the end of the, of the ultrasound probe. And then slide it into the bag. And it's covered that way. Just make sure that you can feel your little notch so you can get your orientation right and then you're ready to scan um, what you need to scan. If you want to put a little bit of jelly on the skin as well, just make sure that you use a sterile jelly to put onto the patient's skin. That often helps just to give you a little bit of a better picture. So we, there we've got a picture. We can play around with it now and make sure that we, we're happy with it. So there's two techniques to use when, when you are going to do an ultrasound guided biopsy. The one is the, the longitudinal technique where you come in um, longitudinally to your, to your probe and the other one would be a transverse technique where you come in underneath the probe and you, as you move the probe away you advance your needle and follow your needle into the, into the lesion that you want to biopsy. I would say the one that's easiest um, to learn would be the longitudinal technique where you go in underneath um, your, your um, probe. So I'm just going to show you, so first of all I've got some local anesthetic here. So one needs to get your, your olive or your soft tissue lump that you want to biopsy and um, in the middle of the picture is, is advisable. Um, I usually come in from the, the right, my right hand side, the, the right hand side of the picture here. Um, that's where I would enter. So I'm going to put the needle in there and you can see if you come in just right underneath the edge of the probe, one can see the needle as it comes in and then I'm going to inject a little bit of lignocaine and injecting as I come back. So again I don't inject into the lesion itself because there's no pain. You want to inject the tract and a little bit into the skin. Once that is done I usually leave the needle there so that I don't lose the position of where I've injected, otherwise one tends to, um, as you move around, you tend to lose where you've injected. So I usually leave the needle there, I get a blade, I, I take the probe away and then um, I've marked the skin with a needle, I just make my little skin incision, stab incision with a needle where my, where my um, biopsy needle is going to come through. Then I'll take my probe again. Can make sure that your notch is on the right side, position it on your patient, get the illusion that you want to biopsy in the middle of the screen. Then you're going to take your needle, make sure that it is ready and ready to fire, activate it, get your safety off, decide what, what length of biopsy you want to take. So I'm just going to keep it on 22 millimeters for this um, exercise. You come in underneath your probe and you advance the needle. The more parallel that you can get your needle to the probe, the better you would see your needle. So if you can push the needle down or move the tissue so that it's nice and parallel, then you can see it. And we will stop just in front of what we want to biopsy. And then if we're happy with that position, we're going to warn the patient that they are going to hear a little clicking sound. I'm going to press the button and it will fire through the lesion and one can then withdraw it. If you open the specimen port, one can see a nice little um, specimen there that um, 
you can then put into your biopsy specimen pot with a needle. You can then reactivate your needle, put the safety off and do exactly the same thing again. Follow the needle in up to your lesion. If you're happy, press the button and it will take the specimen. Open up and put that into your specimen pot. For this, um, the, there's an olive there with a pimento in the middle. So here you can see there's a little bit of red and a bit of green. So I've hit the center of that olive with that second biopsy. If you are happy with your biopsies, two is more than enough. If you've seen it going through the lesion, two is enough for a breast biopsy. For a soft tissue sarcoma where they do lots of immunohistochemistry stains, you might want to do a little bit more. But as a rule, two is going to be enough. If you are going to do a fine needle, a guided fine needle um, biopsy, this is usually done for thyroid. I would suggest you use a 22 gauge black spinal needle. Because this, the, the normal um, uh, the hypodermic needles that we use for, for, for injections is too short. If you, you just can't follow them in nicely. They, they often are too short to get in under your probe um, to see them. So the same thing again. Um, I'm going to come in underneath my... Because these needles are quite thin, they are, they are often slightly more difficult to see but you can still see them quite clearly so there you can see the movement of the needle I'm just positioning it and a little bit of resistance change as I go hitting the, the olive there. I usually go in with a stylet in I would then remove the stylet and then with sort of a couple of stabbing movements I would do my biopsy and again rotate the needle as I've shown you earlier on. By rotating the needle and doing that stabbing motion, one can usually get a good biopsy. Remove your needle, attach it um, to a syringe, um, express your, your, your tissue onto your um, slides, make your smear, fix it and that will then go off to the lab. Um, to end off, I'm just going to show the sort of transverse technique for interest sake. It is not a technique that I, that I often use. So what you need to do with this technique is, you need to get your olive in the middle of the, of the screenshot. You then need to move your ultrasound, usually the same depth as... So you're going to start, if you're coming in at a 45 degree angle, if you think about this clearly, and you come in, the, if you take your, the distance away from what you want to biopsy is the depth of the lesion. So on the ultrasound machine, one can measure the depth of a lesion. Um, so I'm just going to measure the dense distance from the skin to the olive. So that's about 8 millimeters. Um, it's not very far, so it's quite superficial. So once you've got that distance, one can then go away from what, what, what we want to biopsy, the same distance, come in underneath at a 45 degree angle, underneath your probe, and one can see the, the tip of the needle there, and then as you advance your needle, tip of the needle there, as you advance the needle, you advance the the probe until you see your specimen. So there I'm right on top of the specimen and tip of the needle there on the specimen and then fire and take your biopsy. Remove the needle and there we've got a biopsy of, of the olive. And that goes into your specimen pot, um, biopsy done. I think that's, uh, that's a much more difficult technique to, to master. Um, it is a technique that a lot of the anaesthetists use when they place um, IV cannulas. So it's something that if you practice, you know, the more practice you do, the, more, the better you get. I prefer, I must say, I prefer the 
sort of longitudinal technique where you go in underneath your, your probe. So the most important thing actually is, if I can show you outside, is that you try and get your needle and your um, probe parallel. If you can position the needle parallel to the probe and you can do that by manipulating tissue or just coming in more posterior into your specimen, um, if you can get the two parallel, you will see your needle better. If you come in at, an, at a constant angle like that, you're not going to see your needle uh, very well. So try and get the two parallel and that will make it much easier for you to see your, your um, needle. Okay, so thank you for watching this um, educational videos that we've made on soft tissue biopsies and hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully I've taught you something that you can take into practice. Um, hopefully you, we can improve the quality of the biopsies that we do so that we don't need to do so many repeat biopsies. Um, we save a lot of money and pain to our patients that way. So um, all we want you to do is to, to try what you've seen here. Um, if you do it correctly, you'll have good results. Um, thank you very much.